I've been thinking a lot about the fire analogy that Ryan Bell used on the show last week, and not just because I'm getting six emails a day chastising me for not taking him to task on it a bit more. So for those of you who didn't hear that interview, my guest was a former pastor turned atheist who likened religion to fire in that it can warm your house, but it can also burn your house down, right? Like basically it's a tool that can be used for good or bad. Now, I, I pointed out at the time that my biggest issue with that analogy is that unlike religion, fire is a necessary thing. Right? I mean, we actually need fire to accomplish many of the things that make our society function, but there's nothing that religion can do that humanism, philosophy, and science can't do without the inherent risk of burning down your house. So it's less like using fire and more like using a hammer that may or may not explode at any moment when there are other non-exploding hammers in the toolbox. Now, to his credit, Ryan agreed with that, but he elaborated a bit, and that's where the impetus for all these emails came from. So a quick point of etiquette, it's crazy rude to have a guest on one week and then spend a monologue the following week arguing with what he said when he's not there to defend himself. So for the record, I'm going to be passing along a transcript of this diatribe to Ryan, and if he feels the need to clarify or rebut anything I've said, I'm going to give him a chance to do so on the show because there are limits to my assholery. And now that I have all of that out of the way, let me argue with somebody who isn't here to defend himself. I, actually, you know what? First, let me start by defending my guest, okay, because several emailers took him to task for what I consider the wrong reason. They argued that unlike fire, there are no benefits to religion. You know, so it's less like using fire and more like just telling yourself you're warm over and over again. And, and that's clever, but I think it's a bridge too far. It's, it's unrealistic to say that there are no benefits of religion. You know, I mean, I'll agree with you if you say that the benefits are always outweighed by the costs, sure. Hell, I'll start a podcast to argue that point on a weekly basis. But it's hard to deny that some people take some benefits away from religion at some times. You know, I, I don't want to overstate the case, of course, because the same can be said of basically everything. You know, meth addiction sucks, but in the long term, it'll probably save you some money on dental cleanings. Technically, that's a benefit. You know, but when people say there are no benefits to religion, I bristle a bit because not only is it technically incorrect, but it's damn easy for even a dull theist to disprove that through personal experience, right? So in that sense, I agree with what Ryan was saying. Religion is a tool that can be used for good and bad. Now, I don't think it's possible to use the good parts and not the bad parts, and I think that he was implying that with his argument, but that's way too minor to spend a whole diatribe going back to. My real point of contention comes from his historical perspective. And even if you didn't hear the interview, I'm sure you've heard this point made before. Yes, religion is an overall negative influence on today's society, but at a certain point in history, it served an overall positive function. And, of course, the segment of human evolution religion most often gets credited with in this analogy is morality. I have no idea why, to be honest. I, I think it's much easier to make the case that religion served an overall positive historical role in terms of, you know, like formalizing education or universalizing writing or, or improving international diplomacy. And, you know, don't get me wrong. I still think that those are all wrong. They're just easier to argue in favor of. But the idea that religion served an overall positive function in the development of morality is, not to put too fine a point on it, absurd. I mean, sure, if you segment the chunks of time just right, there are bound to be points you can look at, you know, where the graph is moving up, because that's true of all graphs, pretty much. But, but you know, look, if I exclude all the points where Bill Cosby was raping somebody, he's not a rapist either, you know? You're not allowed to do that. The fact of the matter is that religion has been and continues to be an overwhelmingly negative drag on moral development. The very idea of codifying moral dictates in such a way that renders them static is a definitional impediment to moral development, and almost all religions do that. Look, I mean, you know, I don't even care how good your rules are. You know, if, if I wrote down 10 rules right now and convinced everyone that they were divinely mandated by God, and if you didn't follow them, you were going to go to hell, you know, I might ameliorate some moral quandaries in the moment, but the fact that they're immutable makes them an impediment to progress at some point. Divine moral dictates might help in enforcing the moral code of today, but they do so at the expense of the moral code of tomorrow. And if history has shown us anything, it's that tomorrow's moral code is almost always more appealing than yesterday's. Unless, of course, a whole bunch of people just got more religious. <laughs>